Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dominic Camargo. I am a software developer in Cohort 17 at the SMU's Guildhall program. Uh, this is a tutorial in networking, setting up and joining a dedicated server in the UDK environment. I will be going over the first half of this tutorial with you, which is setting up the dedicated server. My partner, Andrew Martz, will be going over how to join a dedicated server in the second half of this tutorial. So with that being said, I'd like to get down to business. The first things we would like to clear up are any assumptions I have about you. Of course, other than the fact that you are a wonderful human being, I would also assume that you know how to create and at the very least understand how custom game, type, game types and mutators work. Understanding this concept will be able to help us really utilize the command line tools that give us the power to launch dedicated servers through UDK. And past that, I would hope you know how to use the front end tool located under your UDK install area and use that to create a custom installer. Doing this and giving this installer to everyone who will play your multiplayer game is necessary. So if you don't know how to do this and have not distributed this to anyone who is going to play your game, please do so. Um, the best thing I can tell you right now is if you don't know how to use this, go ahead and look up those tutorials also available at the Guildhall's wiki for UDK and probably also in the Guildhall YouTube channel, I would suggest searching there. So go ahead and take the time to do that now if you're unfamiliar with this tool and how to create an installer. If you are way cooler than that and know what you're doing, let's get down to business again. So we're going to go ahead and try launching our custom install game. Mine is called All Types Test. We're going to go ahead and launch that. Hopefully you know the name of your custom installed game, so I would suggest you also launch that application right now. <coughs> what you would think is, oh, I'll just go through the multiplayer. And you might be questioning, well, why on earth am I even watching this tutorial? One of two things will happen right now. The first of which, and whenever we start this game, is that, hey, look, it's going to a game. So we think that, oh my gosh, this is actually working. I can just get people to connect to this using the menu. You, sir, are actually gravely mistaken. This will not work at all. It may tease you into thinking it does, but it does not. There is no way possible for you to connect to this server. And for the lack of uh, reasoning, I am not going to give you right now. Uh, the main reason I won't tell you this is because it's just <laughs> out of scope for the, it is out of scope for this tutorial. You can find out more later and maybe do some more detailed research, but unfortunately it really isn't just going in, worth going into right now. Just know that unfortunately you cannot use the menu system to actually create a multiplayer server. Most people actually don't even get that far. Some people hit start game and nothing happens. Either way, unfortunately it doesn't work for us, so we're just not going to deal with the actual menu system right here. So, why am I here today? How come I am about to become your greatest friend and personal savior? because I know how to launch a dedicated server. We're going to go ahead and become even more great friends with the Windows command line. If you don't know how to use this great tool, I suggest you take a few moments to Google some basic commands for this and get familiar with navigating around and understanding the directory structure of Windows. Again, if you're cooler than that and are ready to go deep into uncharted territory, let's go ahead and continue on. What we're looking for right now is the udk.exe file that is located in your custom installation of your UDK version. So I'm getting to mine, which is called all types test. And the udk.exe file will be located under the binaries folder and inside of that the win32 folder. You'll notice here that we have the udk.exe. Great. That's the application we're going to be using from the command line. So what are we actually doing with this? Well, the udk.exe has many available tools uh, and <clears throat> commands for it. To launch a server, we will be using the all-powerful server command. Now, you can use this command as is. However, it will launch a blank map with a blank game mode, and you won't be able to do anything with it. So I would suggest not doing that. The interesting part of this command is launching it with a specific map name. And so we're going to do that right now. We're just going to launch a server with the classic DM deck map. You'll notice it does that. And then, hey, look, this other window comes up. And this is, of course, your server. Congratulations, you have now just launched your first dedicated server in the UDK environment. What you're going to be looking for here is if there's any yellow or red to see if there's any warnings or errors. If so, deal with them. This one is clearly a new warning that shouldn't happen. Um, but regardless, it does. Um, this is one that just occurs, no big deal. There probably are several like that. 
just keep an eye out if there's a lot of yellow or even a little bit of red. Just make sure you know what you're doing. <clears throat> what you're looking for here, the key things, game, initial, game engine initialized as well as the initializing game engine completed. So <clears throat> just keep an eye out for that. And as long as those are there, you most likely have a working server. Now, my partner, again, is going to show you how to connect to the server. I'm just going to tell you with my all-powerful knowledge that I am correct, and this is, in fact, a valid server that we can use. So you might be saying now, okay, Dominic, well, what else is there to this? Well, there's actually quite a bit. What we're going to head and want to do is experiment with what other options we have available to us. Most notably, the next exciting thing is specifying a custom game type. Now, a game type modifies a whole version of UDK, such as... Uh, <coughs> not version, I should say, but specific game type within UDK, such as Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, those types of things. So you can specify a custom one that you've made yourself, or even use a map uh, that is specified, say, for Deathmatch, but then use the Team Deathmatch definition uh, from the command line. So the way to do that is to say question mark, that'll separate any arguments we have, then say game equals, and notice there's no spaces here. And then this is where you would specify your package and what a package is, is for those of you who are developing in, in <coughs> Visual Studio, your package is the folder in which all of your classes exist uh, for the custom game type or mutator you've made. So in our case, this will be... Oops, look at that stupid thing. In our case, this will be the mm, one of the default UDK engine classes, and we're just going to use that. The next thing we're going to use is the UDK... The next thing you're going to specify, excuse me, is the game class that you are using. Now, this specific class will be the one that inherits or extends from the game info class or some derivative thereof, such as UT Deathmatch, UT Team Game, classes like that. So let's go ahead and specify one right now. We're going to specify one that came default with UDK. And we're going to go ahead and say Deathmatch Deck. But instead of just Deathmatch, we're going to go ahead and launch with Team Deathmatch. So we'll say Game Equals. And then I've looked these up beforehand. You can probably find these on Google. I simply control F and found these within the Visual Studio project. And right now, I can tell you with all honesty that utgame.utteamgame is the deathmatch, excuse me, team deathmatch game type. So we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste that here. And again, as you'll notice, we have the package right here, utgame, that is the package, and then the class that extends the game info type. So that is the ut team game. So if we just enter this little command, we'll see what happens, and there we go. You'll notice we get that same error regardless, but what we're looking for here is that <coughs> we have specified the game class as UT Team Game, which is Deathmatch, or excuse me, Team Deathmatch, and then we're, you, we notice that the game engine has initialized and the game engine is completed. So congratulations, you now have launched your second server in the UDK environment. Again, I can tell you with complete honesty that this server does work. I'm not going to connect to it right now, though. So, that's great. We now know how to launch a custom game type. So, what else is there? Well, you also have the ability to launch your custom mutator. Or, again, a given mutator within UDK. Now, how do you say this? Well, it's, for some reason, oddly similar to how you launch a game. You would say, question mark, mutator, and then equals, guess what? Your package dot your mutator class. Now, similarly to game class, the mutator class extends from UT mutator. So whichever actual file extends from the mutator type is what you're going to specify here. So in our case, in this little demo, I'm going to show you using the speed freak um, <coughs> specification. So that is for us udk.exe server dm deck. We're going to say here, instead of game type, we're going to specify a mutator. And say that equals utgame.utmutator underscore speed. I'll go ahead and say enter. Oh, you'll notice we've got another warning. And this is actually good, because now you see that <coughs> the game engine initialized here and the game engine completed. So you know that you have an error, you need to deal with it. And in my case, I can tell you right now, it's because the speed freak is not correct. I'll actually show, or excuse me, speed is not correct. The full extension is actually speed freak. And you can see that right here. I just wanted to show you what an error would look like. So we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with command line, you can up to withdraw or to retrieve your most recent command. 
And so we're going to just modify that last part there and paste this. Now we have speed freak. And you'll see now that we have actually done a full launch. Notice <coughs> the, the service has still failed to start. However, the game engine has initialized and it's completed. And we are out of warnings up here, so we're good to go. So this works. And again, I can really tell you that this does work. I'm not going to show you how to connect right now.